Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Muskan, your host, and your dose for the podcast series, The Journeys, presented by Insightner. Today we have with us Ashish Hindhani. Welcome to the podcast where we bring you stories of inspiring leaders who have made remarkable contributions in their respective fields. In this episode, we are thrilled to have Ashish Hindhani, an IIM indoor alumnus with over 11 years of experience in the customer experience domain. Currently, Ashish is leading the customer service experience and quality team at Tata Click. Besides owning the customer charter for Click, Ashish leads multiple awards winning programs like Customer Insights, Digital CX, Process Excellence, and Customer Journey Management. Ashish has previously worked at WNS Global Services. Throughout his career, Ashish has been passionate about improving customer satisfaction by understanding their needs and expectations. In this podcast, Ashish will share his insights and experiences. So sit back and join us as we dive into the world of customer experience with Ashish Himtani. Hello, Ashish, and welcome to the podcast. Hi, Muskan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, and yeah, look look forward to the podcast and the insights. So how are you doing? All good. Look look forward to the podcast. Look forward to the learnings. Look forward to the, the conversations. Yeah. So shall we begin with the questions? Absolutely. So my first question to you is, can you tell us about your professional education background and how you got to where you are today? Sure. So it's been a fairly... Uh, uh, I, I would say uh, simple journey, not nothing extraordinary per se. It all started uh, back in to, uh, 2006 when I uh, did my engineering uh, in electronics uh, and communication. Uh, I finished engineering in to, uh, 2010. Uh, that was the point where I decided I could potentially uh, do an MBA. But I think back then, I did not have too much of an idea that why do I want to do it. So, you know, I, I ended up then uh, working in IT uh, for a couple of years with persistent systems. Uh, by the time I had worked for two odd years, I realized now it's it's the time to make more uh, broader impact for the organization and not just have a localized kind of a contribution. So that was the point. I decided to do uh, my MBA and uh, that's when I moved to IIM Indore uh, in 2012. So I did a couple of uh, years uh, B-School studies there. And then immediately after that, I was uh, recruited as part of a springboard program by uh, WNS Global Services. Mm -hmm. So springboard was more of a fast tracking kind of a program where we uh, were given a chance to contribute on a larger scale, joined in as an AVP. And I think that's where the customer experience uh, journey and the quest began. Uh, it continued for uh, seven odd years. That's where I, I, you know, figured and explored the length and breadth of customer experience, worked with clients globally uh, across different time zones, different geographies, at different stages of their customer experience maturity. So I think that's when I, I got a global exposure and, and an overall understanding of how customer experience will play a pivotal role. And immediately after that, uh, that's when Tata Click happened. It, it's been a year and a half and uh, it, it has been a fantastic journey. I ended up moving from a service provider uh, perspective to the business perspective. So it's it's been a fantastic journey and uh, look look forward to learning and growth and, and more contributions. Yeah, but That's been my journey so far. So Ashish, uh, so as we are talking where you are currently, so can you share some of your daily habits or routines that contribute to your success where you are today? So daily habits, I think, uh, in in this era of working from home, you just get up in the morning and start, uh, you know, attending the meetings right from start. But I think one specific habit uh, that I make sure uh, I I uh, have it in my daily routine is working out in the evening after the office hours. Uh, it's it's not just about having uh, a good health and all of that. I think that's just a byproduct what i feel is uh, if if you religiously uh, take a habit like maybe you know working out and then it's it's kind of getting out of your comfort zone something that pushes you to to the next limits and all of that right so i think it makes you mentally 
a little bit tougher. Uh, it instills a sense of discipline uh, in you. And, and I think those are basically the habits and the outputs that kind of then contribute across all the other aspects of your life. So then in, in uh, work, you end up contributing, uh, you know, 100% in, in other responsibilities and daily tasks, you end up uh, being a little, you know, more charged, more responsible, more disciplined. So it kind of changes your mindset for good, right? So I think this is one habit uh, that, that I keep uh, in my daily routine and that's helped me immensely. And, and that's where I've developed that sense of discipline and responsibility. And I think if, if I have traits like this, th this is where you then tend to outperform the others and kind of, you know, move forward. So this is one habit that I would want to continue forever. So, yeah. So, Ashish, with all this routine, how do you stay motivated and maintain a positive mindset, you know, in the face of challenges? See, so uh, I think, again, now, uh, motivation is is a little uh, subjective term i honestly am not a big believer of that uh, you you will remain motivated all all uh, through the six, 365 days of the year right what i feel motivation is more of an impulse that uh, today you might have and tomorrow you you might not have correct True. what i personally feel is if you are disciplined if you are doing all the hard work all the satisfaction then you basically derive out of those activities fuels your motivation so it, it is actually the other way around uh, hence I, I am not a firm believer that you need to work only when you are motivated and all of that I think uh, if you are disciplined if you are working hard if you are mentally uh, strong and then you know you feel responsible for doing everything 100% you automatically feel motivated by the quality of work that you do and also you learn something from it as well right so wow. as long as you learn and grow uh rest are just milestones so you need not worry about motivation just put in your work 100 percent, and it's it's all done so ashish my next question to you is can you share a bit about your leadership style and how it has evolved over the years sure so uh leadership uh i think when i joined as an avp i was more of an uh, individual contributor and uh, but I was fortunate enough to get a chance to work with a lot of uh, global leaders with, of course, different styles of leaderships. So as in when you observe uh, different traits of different leaders, it's it's a great opportunity for you to grasp the you know best out of every leader. So I think that's what helped me. Uh, eventually, it was not a predefined style of leadership that I chose. And, and I think uh, this is something that comes uh, with your personality. So as, as the person you are, you will basically adopt a leadership style that is natural to you, right? So that that way, I have a fairly uh, open and transparent style of leadership. I keep it uh, uncomfortably transparent with all my team members. Uh, whatever is said supposed to be done, it is supposed to be done. If you are stuck somewhere, let me know. I don't tend to kind of micromanage. The team will take care of itself. I just make sure they have all the materials, equipment, resources to do what they are supposed to do. And if they get stuck, just uh, patch me in. Otherwise, uh, I make sure if uh, the team members are uh, relatively new in what they are supposed to do, I uh, I render my full support. And as and when they grow into that zone, uh, then it is my responsibility to up the ante, push them to the next level make them a little uncomfortable there and so that it's it's good for uh, you know their learning and growth and all all of that so eventually uh, their win is my win right so i am a firm believer in uh, leaders eat last so as long as they get all the glory and recognition i'm i'm the most happiest person as a manager so, yeah. so ashish you were talking about micromanagement so what do you, what's your take on it and what do you think about it is it good for the employees or not I think it's a fairly uh, abused term in, in today's era. Uh, people uh, need to comprehend it clearly. I think uh, for, uh, and then also uh, the resources need to view support as as a, as a something that, that's com coming positively for them because that's something say helps them in learning and growing. So for, according to me, if the resource is new and the manager uh, is supporting at different uh, steps, uh, not not ending up uh, asking for updates 24-7, all of that. But if, if it is more like a support 
and then the faith in the individual that yeah he or she can do this himself herself i think that is what is the right style of uh, management now uh, it, it it can be micro macro whichever way but right so it it is as long as you don't uh, intervene in uh, the personal lives or or just maybe not end up connecting on on uh, different uh, parts of their routine i think it's it's a fairly uh, it it should be mutually uh, agreed uh, ways of collaborating and connecting and it it should uh, be aimed at learning and growth for the individual so i think yeah that that's the way to go so ashish i want to talk about some of your passionate projects that you're passionate about so can you discuss a passion project or a cause that is important to you and why sure so i think in uh, the daily routine you tend to forget about all of this and and then it's just work that uh, consumes I... most of your bandwidth but i feel amidst all of this uh, one of the passion project that i make sure i always remain part of it is uh, the the humanity part of it where you know i i have been associated uh, mm-hmm. with various ngos back in my hometown in bhopal and uh, back here in pune as well who who are uh, assisting uh, children in their education so you know all the bright kids and and who actually do not have enough resources in, in terms of financial or material and equipment all of that so we make sure uh, we uh, get them all the books we get them all all the uh, material equipment that they need uh, as as part of different ngos and i think that's what keeps me uh, fueling in in uh, rest of my activities and i feel it gives me a profound sense of purpose in life so i think and and that would be my recommendation for everyone to at least have a noble cause in your life uh, it it kind of makes you uh, full at times in in terms of it it will want you uh, work harder grow learn all all of this these things will actually happen in life because otherwise what happens is i've seen a lot of individuals uh, working day in day out and then basically getting exposed to things like burnout right so as long as you have a, a sense of purpose uh, your compass is uh, fairly at place and then you you tend to kind of learn and grow with the purpose so i think that's that's what i found to be really that's a great deed uh, ashish i must say that you're doing and of course people should uh, remember at the end of the day that we are humans and we must help one another and education is a great help that you're doing so uh, my next question to you is uh, how do you measure and analyze customer feedback to drive improvements in the customer experience okay so uh, there are uh, i think different ways in which different organizations usually uh, do it uh i would say there are two key blocks in in all of this right so first part is capturing what your customers are saying right mm-hmm. uh, and then second is making sense of those insights and turning those insights into action so these are the two basic blocks that i feel and and you would see a lot of organizations failing at the first uh, step itself that they are not able to capture the voice of customer across all touch points and then uh, forget about turning those insights into action and all of that right so uh coming to the first step uh how it ideally is done uh, is is via a centralized team uh, who can actually take care of all the customer feedback varying across different platforms like uh, you know you might have some so, uh, comments on social media platforms like a twitter or a linkedin so get that feedback you will also have some feedback on the interaction surveys like a csat or an nps so get that feedback as well uh, also look at the kind of uh, calls or the chats the customers are uh, having with your customer support function correct because that's a gold mine of insights so as long as you capture all of that data synthesize bucketize into uh, you know say top journey buckets or top issue types i think you you got a gold mine of data and now comes step 2 and and you know that you know data is as good as the questions that you ask so data is it will not make sense if you don't ask the right questions and you if your objectives are not pretty clear so i think that's where comes step 2 turning those insights into action uh, mm-hmm. that's where i think there is a need to synthesize all of that information narrow it down condense you don't need to boil the ocean just work on the 28 principle 
20 percent of your issues will be causing 80 percent of the noise yeah. so i think focus on that uh, uh assign it to all stakeholders ensure the closure i think that that's the way to go for an end-to-end -end successful uh, voice of customer complaint handling program so ashish my next question to you is how do you measure and analyze customer feedback to drive improvements in the customer experience sure Muskan. so i think uh there are different ways and techniques uh, by which organizations can do it. Uh, I think the first step is to classify what kind of information do you want to capture and analyze, correct? So uh, it, it can be a structured uh, information like, like a survey or like quantitative data and insights or it, it can be some unstructured information also like uh, comments on social media which are fairly uh, open to subjective interpretation, right? Or it, it can be your uh, calls on the contact center, which actually uh, not just focus on uh, the, the keywords, but also it has to factor in the tonality, the rate of speech, the pitch, all of those factors, right? So that that's something, again, uh, unstructured source of voice of customer. So I think as long as you're clear on uh, marking boundaries between unstructured and structured sources, and you have the right tools to synthesize this information, um, you have the right analytics tools to quantify uh, to analyze the quantified information. Also, right platforms to capture insights from unstructured information. So mm -hmm. you need to capture the sentiment also accordingly. Uh, as long as you are able to do it, uh, I think you will have enough actionables on your plate that you can always uh, create a charter and um, chase with all the stakeholders till closure. Right. And I think when you condense all of these insights, every organization would basically have a 2080 rule where 20% of the issues are causing 80% of the problems. Uh, as and when uh, organizations understand that, uh, focus and narrow down on that specific part of customer journey where maximum problems are happening, uh, try to just streamline that part of journey. I think most of the problems go up. So those, those two are the key steps. One is you identify, analyze the information, and then basically how do you want to take it forward with, with the stakeholders in action. So uh, in your opinion, what are some of the biggest challenges facing the e-commerce industry in terms of customer experience? So in e-commerce, uh, I would say one of the big uh, challenge is uh, the the reducing nature of customer loyalty or you know the, the, the switching costs have kind of almost uh, become negligible so previously you used to have uh, very very strong customer loyalties correct which which is not the case now today you have pretty much uh, the commoditized products in the market right uh, if if you go grocery you have all the platforms almost delivering same kind of products if you go Wi-Fi, broadband, again, you, you have the same tariffs, but given by different service providers. So I think in this era, uh, even in e-commerce, you, you have pretty much the same products, shoes, uh, fashion, lifestyle, all of those products uh, supported by different platforms, correct? So in this era, I think customer has got a little uh, smarter. Uh, everything is on their fingertips. They just can compare products, prices uh, on the go. And then basically switch between all of these platforms. So tomorrow, if I, you know, ha need a, a cost effective option, I will probably go to the e-commerce player, which gives me that option, all of that, right? So one of the biggest challenge today is how do you make that customer stick with you for a long, long period of time, which used to be a case, I think, 10, 15 years back, right? So that's one big challenge that is coming up. Uh, the loyalties have been dwindling. Organizations are finding it difficult to uh, make the customer stick. And in, in an era where the price and product get commoditized, I think it is now the time for customer experience to play that differentiator role. So the brands who will differentiate on experience and service, I think they will eventually win this race of sustaining competitive advantage. So I think that that's the way to go for brands. So Ashish, as you were saying that uh, technology has uh, given a lot of options to the customers. So can you speak to the role technology plays uh, in delivering a seamless and enjoyable customer experience? Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, technology goes a long way in defining uh, that part of a seamless experience, correct? It, it's not just talking to an agent. You know, today the millennials, the Zenji are, are talking about 
having a self service as as a primary option they don't want to interact with a contact center agent they'll probably probably you know want non voice as their primary channels of interactions so with all those uh, consumer behaviors habits changing how do you basically pivot your business accordingly right so i think the first layer has to be a strong self service option that only comes uh, with a strong natural language processing uh machine learning enabled bots as as your primary layer where you end up automating say 40 50 60 percent of your interactions which are low in complexity and urgency so i think as long as you do that uh 50 60 percent of your problem of customer experience is pretty much sorted at this level and and the returns are phenomenal in terms of investments and rois on on these uh technology mm-hmm. interventions correct so i think uh, that's how organizations need to design their customer interaction canvas uh first line of interaction has to be self serve and then eventually it has to be a seamless handover from the bot to an agent the customers need not realize that this is where the bot has broken and this is where i need to do something else it has to be seamlessly created by the brand that the customer actually doesn't realize that when when he or she was talking to a bot and now when he or she is interacting with the agent correct so as long as you mix the right a uh, combination of man and machine uh, ai and and the human empathy i think those brands will eventually go a long way in winning the cx race so ashish how do you balance the need for innovation and new features with maintaining a consistent and high quality customer experience so it's it's not uh, all the time a, a mutually exclusive concept right so innovation sometimes Go, can go hand in hand in in sustaining what you have, but yeah, I think I agree. Uh, there would be at uh, there there would be certain times where it would be a tricky decision to prefer one over the other, right? And we usually, uh, I I believe in a design thinking led uh, innovation uh, approach. Uh, while innovation is fairly subjective, it it can be just a eureka moment for a few. it can be just out of the box thinking for a few but i think if you have a systematic approach to arrive on certain innovative ideas it it always pays dividends so what i believe in is a, a design thinking led approach where you actually uh, vet any innovation via three lenses so one is business viability mm-hmm. how feasible that idea is in in terms of size of impact and then you know quantum of impact the second uh, area is technology feasibility how feasible that idea is in in terms of you know uh, integration uh, efforts to buy or build or acquire that platform all of that and the the third lens is desirability so how uh, bad a customer or my internal stakeholder actually wants that innovation correct so if you prioritize basis viability feasibility and user desirability i think you tend to narrow down on a few uh, innovations and initiatives that you would want to experiment and as part of tata click here we truly believe in a pillar which is called fa- being fast and frugal so we always uh, experiment uh, with with uh, with a small intervention uh, monitor it for maybe a couple of months if it works then then basically go fully overboard but if it doesn't roll back within a month right so it helps us innovate experiment at the same time not uh, lose view of you know the larger perspective so we we tend to then experiment as well as sustain the cx advantage that we got so ashish my next question to you is can you share some of the most important impactful changes you have seen in customer behavior and preferences in recent years so sure, a lot of changes actually and uh, one of the big changes that i briefly spoke about was uh shifting of customers to uh, the non voice channels of interaction right so uh today's customer prefers self service as an option prefers chat or you know interacting with brands on social media so i think those are uh, the the preferred modes of interaction and you will see numerous industry reports where growth of more interaction over these channels uh, for the next few years is expected in in large quantities right so that's what i think organizations need to be cognizant of uh the other trend that i see is the the emergence and evolution of uh social commerce right uh, the value of how uh brands must see engagement as as the precursor for 
the eventual uh, commerce experience, correct? So previously, gone are the days where you have your product uh, in a shelf in a supermarket and the customer comes to buy it, correct? Today, you got to uh, right from the point where you have a product, you have to launch it, you got to launch it in a way that resonates well with the customers, you have to launch it on their channel of choice, you got to uh, involve, you know, influencer marketing, you got to leverage all uh, mediums in, in uh, social, all of that. And then basically engage customers so that they feel valued, they feel heard, uh, and eventually then uh, convert those customers into your loyal set of audience. So I think these are the two big trends, uh, shifting uh, nature of customers to non-voice channels of interaction and uh, the, the shift to engagement-led commerce, right? So I think these are the two big trends that we've seen over the past few years. So Ashish, how do you foster a culture of innovation and creativity within your team or organization? Uh, these see culture and uh, I mean culture of innovation. This is something that kind of doesn't come if you have a you know tracker and a list and you you track regularly with your team. I think this essentially comes with uh, setting up that uh, culture at within your team that all ideas are welcome and you just don't uh, shun off any ideas that that's coming from the team. Uh, I think you got to value all the inputs. You got to look at all the inputs from different angles. If uh, And then, you know, some of them would be viable, not viable, all of that. But you got to give your team that platform so that everybody has the freedom and right to talk about their opinion, what they feel about something, what they don't feel about something. So we make sure before launching any initiative, any big process, whatever, uh, we have every team uh, member's view and perspective on it. Uh, as and when there is a hundred percent consensus, uh, we just go ahead. Otherwise, if there are even say slightest of uh, uh, disagreements or changes uh, in you know perspective, I think we uh, we we briefly discuss and then get everyone aligned on that. So that is one way uh, you foster that culture that every opinion, every viewpoint uh, counts, and then we keep on uh, engaging teams and members and. Uh, various events. So we recently conducted uh, an internal digital week, which was aimed at uh, empowering the team members on, you know, all the aspects of digital that uh, how do you build a bot, what are databases and, and what is AI, what is machine learning, natural language processing, all of that. So one point is you educate and empower your team members so that they think on those lines and eventually contribute around, around all of those areas. Correct. And uh, then you basically have uh, contests or basically have certain events where you welcome those digital uh, in initiatives and digital innovation ideas. And then you basically reward those ideas. You make sure those the winning ideas actually get implemented in real time. So I think those are few some of the suggestions, how we involve uh, all the team members, how we promote the culture of innovation, how we promote the culture of uh, disruptive thinking. So Ashish, I think you might agree with me that we have to stay with the current trends in the industry. If we have to stay in the market. So how do you stay current or uh, on the industry trends and developments to ensure your team is up to date as well? Sure, I think uh, one of the big uh, aspects to our annual uh, uh, strategy and you know annual operating plan is the external perspective. Uh, I think strategy is a 50-50 percentage mix of uh, what is happening inside and then 50% of what actually is happening outside. Mm -hmm. And how do you get that external perspective in is, uh, of course, by doing your own set of research, uh, you know, going through all the analyst reports, competition reports, all of that. Uh, there, there are numerous other ways by which we keep, uh, you know, up to date on all of such information. We usually uh, regularly engage in different CX events happening in the uh, uh, in industry uh, where, you know, we interact with a lot of cutting edge technology providers, service providers who, who are kind of differentiating on one thing or the other. In a fiercely competitive environment, you will find, you will come across a lot of players who, who will have a certain USP that resonates well with your strategic objectives. So I think that is one way. Uh, we also keep on... Uh, doing a lot of benchmarking activities in our organization. 
so we we believe in that core tenet of benchmarking and then being better than the best so we keep on uh, doing mystery shopping exercises benchmarking exercises so that we understand where we are versus the competition how we can get better which of the areas that we today lack in and you know what what are uh, focus areas for the coming year should be and then of course uh, being in the tata group helps you have the internal tata business excellence committee where you can actually share a lot of best practices where you can actually get details on what is uh, happening in a specific area within cx right and and the best in breed within the group companies can kind of come up and assist you further so i think these are different ways with which we keep ourselves engaged and abreast of all the latest happenings in the market so ashish uh, i want to ask you what do you view as your greatest personal or uh, professional achievement and if a failure uh, can you give us an example that if a failure helped you become better in any way uh achievement i i am not a big uh, fan of uh, achievements and milestones and all of that i think uh it it is never about a specific milestone i feel uh all of this is a continued journey uh to improvement and and learning and growth so i think yeah as and when uh, you you achieve something the next uh, goal should be uh, keep looking forward keep learning keep keep growing it's a journey not not a destination you got to enjoy that journey right but yeah specific to failures i would say uh, there there have been a uh, few failures of course nobody likes it but they just come your way they they, they find a way to uh, appear right uh, one of the big uh, i think failures that, that uh, impacted me and impacted my perspectives and and cha- made me change a little bit uh, came back in 2010 uh like i mentioned right so immediately after my uh, graduation i wanted to to do mba but i probably did not have a purpose or or the right reasons to do that mba it was just that i i was kind of good at something but i did not know what do i need to do so back then i uh, there was an examination called joint management entrance test through which you actually uh, get to the iits to do your mba so in that exam uh, in in my first attempt i ended up getting an all india rank of to uh, uh you know across the country and that's when i thought uh, you know uh, my job is pretty much done i will now just sail through easily uh, for the admissions process and all, all of that little did i know that uh, the the group discussion process the interview process is equally critical uh, back then you know i i kind of got a little complacent and careless uh, in those areas i ended up getting rejected of course because i was not at all prepared i probably thought i'll just sail through it did not happen but it it gave me a lesson for life uh, not to be complacent even if you might be a, a smart guy but i think not to celebrate also prematurely and of course not to just focus on a specific milestone or a specific event it it is always a journey uh, you got to keep learning you got to keep growing and then just take it as a long term journey and then i think that's that was the time when i took this lesson appeared again for b schools couple of years later got through and then it's it's been a wiser version of me ever since so yeah so that's actually a great lesson that uh, we all must learn from that uh, you must take the failure and success equally you know yeah yeah so uh, my last question to you is uh, what advice would you give to someone looking to achieve their own goals and aspirations sure i think we can uh, just summarize all all the points that i've just uh, talked about number mm-hmm. one i think uh, be disciplined in whatever you do don't just rely on uh, motivation it will not be there with you all 365 days of your uh, year so be disciplined uh, 80% of the work actually gets done when you just show up right so if there are no excuses you just show up uh, it it will be done uh, your discipline will matter your diligence will matter and and you will feel motivated because of it eventually right uh, number 2 uh, i think strive for uh, excellence don't just sit on milestones think of it as as a continued journey of improvement learning and growth don't just rely, rely on the next best thing that's going to happen to you okay this is my promotion this is my growth or this is where i change my company i think those milestones don't actually matter in the long term as long as you are learning 
then number of years in a company or number of years in a specific role or a band doesn't actually matter so don't sit on milestones keep keep this as a long term journey and keep growing uh, number 3 uh, for innovation uh, be a little fast and frugal don't just go big bang uh, start small fail fast don't shy away from innovation uh, don't shy away from uh, experimentation and number 4 i think uh, having a purpose or or having a noble cause in your life uh, equally matters it is very critical for you to have a purpose in that life and then you keep uh, growing and then basically all all the things uh, fall rightly in place right so i think yeah those those are some three four points that uh, i i would want all the listeners to keep in mind and that, that's it for me yeah these are all great points ashish i must say and this has been an insightful talk about customer experience and of course from your journey we have a lot to learn from so i wish you all the luck and success for the future thank you thanks muskan all thanks to you all thanks to the insightner for having me and i wish you all the best yeah thank you so thank much you ashish and have a great day and year ahead you too have a great day have a great year yeah thank you you're welcome ashish and this is muskan and i'm signing off